Hi friends, hi. We are gonna talk about unsung heroes. I was over spraying one of my favorite daily fragrances just like a day ago and I realized that I never talk about it because it's not much to talk about, you know what I mean? It doesn't quite fit into any of those clickable category. The most complimentary perfume or you, the best gourmand or the best by note or the longest lasting and yet there is like a whole undercurrent of olfactory styles in my collection and my daily perfume life that I rarely ever talk about because they're just comfortable. They're like the unsung daily heroes that are not dramatic, they're not in any way extravagant, that they would be a conversation piece, but I can't imagine my life without them. So today we're gonna fix this discrepancy, this injustice, and sing the praise to the daily heroes in my perfume collection. The first two are easy and you, if you watched me for any period of time you probably you probably have heard about them. First is Calèche Eau Delicate, a discontinued, very hard to find flanker of Calèche by Hermès. This is a designer perfume, yet there's something just magically soft. If I say it's iris, people will think it's powder, but it's not. It's to me, it smells like childhood and I don't know what Kind, what part of my childhood, what specific association that it evokes this feeling and this memory is just such a beautiful, undescribable, comfortable floral. Like that's all I can say, that it's a very soft, nuanced floral. It's not super fresh, there's not any single flower that stands out and yet, and yet, it's so distinguished that I've like you know I love I love all kinds of florals especially complex nuanced like finely weaved I consider myself a lover of a good sophisticated floral and yet nothing nothing that I've tried to this date compared to Calèche Eau Delicate if you go and smell original Calèche anywhere in the department stores you will not still get that impression I don't understand why they made the flag they should bring it back and give it its own name because it's not that reminiscent of Calèche I would say like very far from it really beautiful fragrance very hard to find it's just the daily bliss. It just brings me to this wonderful, delightful, delicate cocoon. I love it. The second one is a my daily lily scent. And I decided to talk about it again because I, again, consider myself a devoted lover of lilies. And yet, despite that very fact, I find them kind of tiresome. Like, I'll wear a lily scent and I'll like take a break for a couple of days. It's very rare for me to go and binge when it comes to something with very central lily in it. And Atkinson's My Fair Lily is the first scent that I could just like bathe in, wear daily and not get tired of it. So the way that they approached lily, not lily of the valley, but actual like lilies, right? Like royal lilies or tiger lilies and... and at such and such, is they removed any kind of deep animalic and spiciness from it. So this is a very high frequency um, impression, olfactory impression that you'll get from lily scents. The only other comparable from perfume on the market would be Cartier Bazeville. A lot of you know it if you have ever uh, searched for lily scents. Cartier, I had it. I gave it to my friend. She loved it. She loves it. Um, that one is more musky, more piercing, a little bit more bright. And to me, that one is a little less about lilies and a little bit more about bright piercing musks. I'm not a big fan of musks of that nature. So this is heartier, it's not as sharp and through that more wearable. Not the longest lasting, not the biggest trail, but it's again such a botanically Mm, wonderful sketch of white lilies minus all the headache minus all the heaviness and animalic and spicy nature of lilies I do have perfumes that do explore that part of the lily sense 
and I love them but I only wear them sparingly. This I can wear all day, every day. I mean, you can tell, right? Like it's a, it's a, it's a lot of use. So highly recommend if you always wanted a non-usual, you know, not your usual floral, but something that is unique enough, but comfortable enough for daily use. My Fair Lily by Atkinson's, the most wearable Lily scent on the market. For daily use, I mean. All right, now I dare say I might surprise you. Um, lately, I've been trying to shake things up after I did that just monumental challenge 24 for 24, only 24 fragrances for a year. Uh, if you haven't watched it do, you will see me nearly cry um, as I was going through just, it was just emotionally wracking to like make that extreme reductionist decision. So I'm trying to shake things up because I have a large collection. So I'm trying not to show you any obvious repeats. All of my favorites still stand. La Mia Perla by La Perla, like all of that stuff. But you know, I've been talking about them to death. There is, there, there's more to my collection than just that. So I'm bringing you things that I've been using and abusing daily recently because I'm kind of like doing a bit of a rotation in my collection. I didn't stop loving those perfumes. I just need a break. I think we can all <laughs> relate to that sentiment. So as I'm thinking about sweeter romantic floral, I'm kind of on a kick with frangipani and the lightest delightful a somewhat oceanic from Japan is Bali Flora by Laboratorio Olfativa. That was a gift from a perfume boutique in Armenia. Thank you, X Molecules, so much. I was presenting an Italian niche brand there, and pretty much that was gratis for me stopping by. Um, this collection, the gray one, um, I think this is still Jean-Claude Elenam, I think he does all of their special collections now. I haven't heard anybody to talk about it, it's not that advertised. Their main line by Laboratorio Alpha Tivo is known fairly well, they have black and white. Their special yellow line, I have a few, I heard a lot about it. This one I haven't heard a lot and it's kind of pricey, so let me give you a scoop. It's a very sophisticated, somewhat salty, I hate call it mineral because it's not, it's not the like mineral mineral, like we've, we've seen some mineral scents on the market in the last five years that will just uh, sometimes shock you with how industrial or kind of inorganic they, they, they smell nearly, like sometimes they send you straight to underworld. This is very thinly weaved minerality into some kind of salt, it's like a salty water, slightly salted water with frangipani. It's such a delightful, it's not a contrast, but it is somewhat a juxtaposition, right? Like frangipani is fruity, tropical, the, the, the flower itself, if you ever smelled it in Hawaii or anywhere else where it grows, it actually grows in Florida too. It probably depends on the type of frangipani, but it literally smells like a fruit salad. It smells like fruits and it's a flower. So this rounded, fruity, exotic, fruity smell with the salty mineral water, mm, so elegant, light, but charming. I loved it in heat, like when it's really, really hot and let's say you're a little bit bored with colognes or citruses or bergamots. I mean, they do an excellent job keeping us awake and sane in the extreme heat. But sometimes it just, can I wear something else and still survive this heat? Bali flora blossoms in heat without being sticky, without being syrupy, without being overwhelming. It's just enough of this mineral salty freshness and just enough of fruity, Mm, flirtatious from Japani to keep things in check. Love it for every day. And again, like I couldn't possibly 
put it in any other perfume video other than talking about frangipani itself, which is a possibility if you want me to. Um, because it's an elegant, but not screaming, right? Like it's not, there's nothing so much extra that it's a conversation piece. It's not secre Secretions Magnifique by Tate Liber d'Orange that smells like, you know what, right? It's not a shocker, but it's a charm charmer. And another frangipani, since we're on this, like I've been like kind of on the tropical floral kick lately, is Serge Luton's La Domptuse, Domptuse in, in Cage. Oh my God, let me, let me double check. Uh huh. La Domptuse and Cage. That's as good as it's gonna get, all right? It's just I'm not a French speaker. Frangipani is the last flower I would expect Serge Lutens to bring to the market in the recent decade, but they did. It's actually not that old. And this is very sweet, creamy, I would say even milky in the way that Santal can be, uh, Frangipani. It's very vanillish, rounded, milky, charming. And as, as long as it doesn't get too hot and it's it's already getting kind of sticky in Florida. Can you believe it? We're just at the beginning of March and it's pushing to higher 80s. Whew, this summer, I, I better find some, some escape to the north this summer. I don't think I can survive yet another Florida summer. Anyway, uh, as long as it's not too hot, this is amazing. I, I'm i not that big into syrupy and super sweet florals, but this is one exception. It's sweet. It's almost jammy. Not too, not too far. It's because it's this milky roundness. I think it's more bearable for me than sometimes sugary syrupy sweetness. Love it love it and i kind of i kind of overuse it a bit to be honest like it doesn't need that much but it's such a like flamboyantly sweet tropically sweet fragrance and again so flirtatious and easy to wear i always expect something you know like a touch of you know, kind of a touch of death in every saint Luton's fragrance because they're so gothic and so M moody and murky by their branding. This is just a freaking charmer. It's wonderful. Again, this is La Dame Tous en Cage. Here we go. Here we go. Say that ten times fast. Uh, and the next one, another kind of Tropicalia, which I think is shifted way more toward. Um, mineral oceanic kind of salty seaweedy lemoniness and this is Limanakia by uh, Pierre Guillaume and his brand Parfumie Générale. I am very eager to explore more of this brand. This is definitely a, one of my key interests in 2024. The brand has been around forever. It's a fairly renowned niche. I'm interested in it first and foremost because they have a wide enough variety, but they are not overproducing like crazy. They're not, so far at least. They haven't been, you know, releasing 50 perfumes every year. So for me, that makes them eligible to study. They have interesting and imaginative combinations, yet they're not too expensive. I mean, depends. They have like some premium limes that are kind of pricey, but their general offerings are okay. I would say for a niche brand, that's okay. And they are more easy to understand. I think this one could be a really good entrance niche brand where I could introduce people to niche perfumery through Perfumie General without like scaring them too much. For example, I rarely start like people when people come for perfume styling or, you know, consultation, I rarely start them on Comme de Garçons or <laughs> before <laughs> or certain Etat Libre d'Orange. It's, you know, Sometimes shock therapy works, but you still need to, you need a win. And I find certain brands just give you that a little bit of uniqueness. They give you a win without taking you too far. 
especially for Western noses, that people in the West are so, just like me, actually, so overly sensitive to scents that you got to start gently before you jump straight to Oud Infini or, you know, <laughs> other, other super potent material-based extracts like Nasomato, for example. I probably wouldn't start with Nasomato if anybody came to me looking forward to trying something, you know, outside of Lancôme, Chanel, Dior that you can find in every department store and that all smell the same. So, um, Limanakia is kind of this really great departure uh, from fresh scents because I wouldn't call it too similar to, let's say, like, where would you, what could you try modern mineral oceanics? That is Tom Ford Costa Azura that you can find almost anywhere. And Tom Ford Costa Azura, it's a slightly watered down version of Beach Hut by Amouage. And Limanakia is a more floral and a little bit more of a lotusy kind of green and watery it's not water in terms of that it's not potent it just has this kind of fluidity to it it's like mm, fragility to it when you smell it it's a departure toward that realm from these oceanic mi mineral perfumes i love it to me it's quite quite salty and almost not too seaweedy it's more green than it's seaweedy like if you want like a good really seaweedy perfume i got one for you but leave me a comment below like i can talk about it later um so yeah limonakia has i've been just like grabbing and spraying and feeling very happy about it and what's good that it's kind of fairly long lasting for a fresh kind of morning scent another favorite of mine i have mentioned it before but i don't think i've been in your ears too much about this one you do know that i love serge Luton's waters so I am kind of like switching my favorites around. Um, this is becoming more worn by me than the other the other three that I have. Uh, Parole du, Parole du, du de, Parole du. Lemons, pine needles, and that's it. Simple yet just right. I also have a shower gel of Parole Dew and I love it just as much in the shower. I feel that, like, I, I will still wait for your comments to accumulate under the video about what are the top uh, olfactory, like what are the top notes of 2024, because one of the trends I left for you to decide for me. But I am kind of like thinking, should I pick pines? Should I pick these, like, the theme of breathing in the fog in the forest kind of scent, you know, or breathing it in when you're standing on top of a mountain covered by forest. Because I, like, I really dig cedar, pine, I really dig woody fragrances, but it's not that easy to find one that would be not too dark or wet or condensed or resinous like something that just breathes you know like has a little bit of like lung opening effect that really is a seductive concept to me and i find that parole du by serge lutens is a step in the right direction is it the best one i don't know i haven't tried i haven't found that many uh pine cedar like you know foresty perfumes that have this opening effect and they're in and at the same time are not too dense so you're thinking about these uh creams for your back you know what i mean like they're this herbaceous piney creams that you put when you have a sore back and they s or like essential oils sometimes that have cedary piney essences like they are all it's too far like you want it to be just a little bit more elevated, a little bit lighter, a little bit more, I guess, bergamot and minty and tolu balsam, essentially. All right, moving on. S kind of silky yet feminine perfumes. I got two for you. I am in love, in love with the both of them. And yet they're, again, such undersung heroes. I would be struggling to bring them into any other video if we didn't have that particular topic because they're kind of subtle 
and you can drag them apart into notes. So, Burberry body, tender, eau de toilette. I don't know why Burberry body has so many flankers, so it's really confusing. I'll read it for you again. It's a very specific one that I adore. Burberry body, tender, eau de toilette. Because it's a sensual, kind of lotion-y, musky rose with absinthe. Or, if not absinthe as like a liquor, but tarragon, just a little bit, like sagebush, just a little bit of subtle bitterness. And yet it's so silky, lotion-y. It's so comfortable and it's very quiet. I'm not gonna like mislead you here. It sits close to the skin, but the, like I am willing to bathe in it. Like with perfumes of this nature, I have no problem carrying eight mil decants with me and putting them in every purse. They are not, they are not expensive. It's not a big deal if you like decant and put it everywhere. And here you can refresh it every hour if you wish to. So, and what's the most beautiful part of perfumes of this nature is their initial opening. They're like opening is everything. And for that, I can forgive them that they don't last long. I'll just keep, I'll just keep refreshing. People love them when they're like, when you just freshly applied uh, Burberry body tender. Like I, as soon as I apply it fresh, people just like, what is this? It's just so sensual in this teeny tiny bit of herbaceous bitterness that's just kind of hidden there in the silky rose. Mm. So good, so elegant, the ep epitome of British elegance. And the second one, which is a more affordable and more interesting and more nuanced than Maison Crookjohn Aqua Universalis is Le Mixed by Nikolai Parfums. I was not a big fan of this brand till, till I tried this one. Just too sour, too much sour musks. I, I'm, not, I'm not digging their base. This is a notable exception. Le Mixed is essentially, it's like lemony verbena-ish kind of, I should call it cologne, but it's not because just like Aqua Universalis, if you ever tried that one, that one is easier just to find, to sniff. This is deeper, brighter, more interesting, but they're very, very close. I had a decant of Aqua Universalis and I wore them side by side. This is just a slightly better version, essentially, of that. And it's, as far as I know, it's cheaper. Um, you, you would think it's a cologne, but it's like if you take the cologne ingredients, you know, the citrusy, bergamotty, sparkly, refreshing, and you dump them in the silkiest, smoothest body lotion. So there is something so soothing and soft, just like in body uh, tender, Burberry body tender or the toilette, uh, something so sensuous and silky in the way that these refreshing ingredients are combined, that I am in love with it. Like every time I spray, it's like the perfect elegance. It's like buying new slacks and a new silk blouse or satin blouse and going to work. You know, like you're like in the freshest pressed outfit that is just right for you. That's the mixed. Highly, highly recommend for you to try it, especially if you're trying to save money on Cork John. Creamier, but a little brighter. Here we are talking about milky musks, both sour and milky sweet. And my version that I love the most, I've, I've gone through quite a few milky musks and both vanilla-ish and kind of teethless and more contrasting and piercing, but my favorite form of, you know, sweet, bright, um, is Malin, uh, Malin plus Goetz. I hope I'm saying their names right. And the fragrance is called Stem. Uh, first, I got a decant from a friend, fell in love with it, and I swapped her her bottle. <laughs> so, um, it is devoted to stems of flowers. So, supposedly, this is a green perfume. 
right? Like think about like when you um, smell freshly cut tulips or daffodils or any other fl florals, flowers. So I expected something way more greeny, lilies kind of smell like that sometimes, but it's my nose, maybe I'm just insensitive to something here, to my nose is just such a creamy, it's like, um, it's like um, frozen yogurt. It's sweet and sour at the same time, but to me it's more surrounded and sweet than it is sour. I love this one, and this one has a little bit more of a projection, has a little bit more of a character than, let's say, body tender. Um, but it's comfortable enough, and it does not, again, uh, when it comes to daily, like unsung daily heroes, I prefer things that are, do not have sticking parts, you know what I mean? When fragrances are so well blended that you can't really tell it apart, it's just a good, well blended, abstract composition that makes you feel good. And that's why a lot of a lot of designer brands probably win in that category. Niche always tries to bring an edge just to set itself apart. Uh, that said, Malin and Goetz to me is like, I can easily see that Lancome could have come up with something like that. And my meditative perfume, when I almost habitually want to spray something, but I don't want to smell anything, and I want to, st to calm down, I want somehow find a way to focus, uh, Jill Sander Softly Serene. It's a blue flanker. To me, it's almost like a rice pe paper. I don't know what it smells like, to be honest. It's maybe like very, very gentle tonka beans. It's like sweet paper. That's what I feel. It's well-rounded. It's very quiet. And I dare say... It's a great perfume if you ever want to try to meditate on the scent. You don't want anything too complex or too bright because that almost distracts you more than it helps you practice um, conscious meditation, like mindfulness, so to speak. This is a perfect one to meditate with because it's just so subtle. It's like sushi of perfumery, you know, compared to like poutine or burgers where everything is just super condensed. This is so minimalistic. It's nearly Japanese in its aesthetic. I, I love it. Um, it saved me from so many moments where I was kind of irritated, anxious, and almost wanted to give up on perfumery. I would apply this one and I would forget I had it, but I, I would just have this feeling of comfort. I wish Not a Perfume by Juliet Has a Gun smell like this. Like, to me, this is what Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume should be smelling like. And also, if you're trying to f increase your olfactory sensitivity, it's always a good idea to take a perfume like this and to try to study it. For example, you're a big fan of Kirki, Tiziana Terenzi, Baccarat Rouge, uh, Francis Krukjan, La Via Belle, uh, Angel, uh, Angel Mugler, mm, and you just can't smell half of the perfumes. Otherwise, go from the complete opposite. Go cold, cold turkey. Don't smell anything. Try to avoid any scents at all for a day or two. Then take something like this, like a minimalist style perfume. And like, okay, let, let, let's make it happen. Um five decans to whoever you know puts it first in their card i'll leave a link in the code that will make it free for you uh below so you spray it presumably either on a piece of paper or on your hand and just after that kind of diet of not smelling anything strong see if you can detect anything and keep trying and eventually you will develop the necessary sensitivity that you will realize that it has a rather complex but very nuanced and quiet smell. It's the same uh, as people are recommended to do when they are recovering from fast food addiction because they are receptor or like uh, overuse of sugar. 
because they, they their taste receptors are absolutely dead they're killed so you have to go bland as bland as you can force yourself to go through for some time until you start adding flavorful ingredients and start developing back your taste buds it's the same with smelling it's it's the same type of signaling it's a chemical uh, receptor based binding signaling so Jill Sander softly serene is my meditative scent and the two that I use the most when I need something truly truly fresh and when I go work out as you like as I mentioned before I'm still looking for uh, to how to bring back lilacs into my um, creative workout routine but so far I've been obsessed with oxygen by Lan Van. and thank you so much everyone who's been tagging me on social media showing your Lan Vans because it costs peanuts right and it's so good I mean let me explain what's good about it it is one of the best affordable fresh ozonic stylish ozonic scents because it still has a bit of that floral think light blue by Dolce Gabbana but even a little bit more posh a little bit more sharper a little bit more stylish oxygen by Lan Van is is that and why pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars if you're looking for something like that you know fresh sharp but still abstract and if you happen to like Dolce & Gabbana light blue but you're just I mean like come on it's been around forever it's a bestseller for a reason it's a wonderful very comfortable fresh uh, semi citrusy perfume but you just get tired of it and you're looking for some variation oxygen by Lan Van and again thank you guys so much when you like tag me and tell me that you bought it because you said it love it love it love it I'm so happy that my recommendation was useful I'm obsessed dude like look at that I mean I do work out every day so <laughs> I use it uh, to the gym uh, I apply it I would say probably 10 but let me let me let me explain I don't like I don't wear anything heavy to the gym but gyms have their own smells I don't like them I'm not a big fan so I like to create small but pleasant space around me when I'm working out so what I do whatever sand I'm using to the gym I do behind the head I do kind of like here not exactly in the armpits but here I definitely do hands because when you move ha your hands you create that kind of uh, light ethereal cloud of scent and I do actually my legs so I do knees I do feet and I do my back so that probably gets me to the 10 sprays and that's just enough probably more would be I would you I would leave a trail and I don't want to interfere on anybody's experience in the gym but I want my experience let's say within the one meter uh, around me to be pleasant smells for me oxygen by Lan Van guys like really cheap it's amazing and the second one that I'm kind of trying out uh, to shake things up is geranium per, per, per monsieur I know I don't like it. why did I pick Frederick Mal of all to work out but it's such a delightfully minty perfume I don't smell geranium here I smell a little bit of anise not a big fan but it's not too much but more so fresh mint with more obviously there is more to it but like it's very fresh and minty to me and minty perfumes never last long they are just so easily gone the mint the, the molecules that make up the mint they are more in the headspace so they're like they're lighter in weight and they evaporate very quickly and if you take mint oil it's kind of like the lower fractures of 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 the scent and it's not quite the same like when you just take fresh mint and you just kind of uh, grind it between your fingers that's what I'm looking for and this 
This is what it gives me. A geranium Permanzio from uh, Frederick, Frederick Mal. So far is the best mint fragrance I found that lasts. These guy freaking lasts. For being so high frequency and so light, I'm surprised it lasts that long. So that's kind of my like freshest of the freshest workout routine fragrances. And the last two that I have are a rose and that is Prada. I'm just, I overused Prada Cologne Vetiver. I've talked about it in probably 10 videos if not more. So I'm just like kind of doing a rotation. I just love how balanced these cologne, uh, colognes are by Prada. They are the... I dare say top three colognes by Designer House. Like, I love Serge Lutens and I love Prada. I can't even think of any other line that I would truly, truly vouch for, you know. Um, their rose is elegant. And this is the one that translates nicely between fresh, elegant, and almost evening. There is, there is just enough of every facet that this plays out very nicely in the morning during the day and for the night time love it love it love it I mean, I think I'm making progress if you can tell if you can see here and the last one is my noob that I've been wearing and getting so many compliments on and already uh, a friend of mine who owns her dance studio asked for a decant because it is so easy to wear and so good this is Pauvre Noir by Serge Lutens. The most comfortable black pepper fragrance on the market. It put Amouage Honor, the male one that's black peppery, on the back shelf. That's the only black pepper I want to smell on myself. I'm obsessed. It's much softer than other black pepper fragrances that I tried. It's more nuanced, it's softer, it's a little bit more demure. And this soft spiciness, it's all about black pepper, but there's like a little bit more of there. It's like freshly ground black pepper. It's not sharp, it's almost smooth. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like a very, very fresh black pepper has some kind of mm, roundness about it, its aroma. And that's what this has. Love Pauvre Noir. It is simple yet well made and in contrast to all the syrups and all the things that we hear we should wear for other people to compliment us I've never heard anybody say anything about a peppery fragrance a pauvre noir by Serge Lutens and yet every time I wear it compliments 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 what are you wearing what are you wearing and people ask for decans and I asked her like do people compliment you when you wear it so like yes all the time all right, these are the unsung daily heroes that are worth mentioning just because they're such workhorses and they really kind of keep, it's like the glue that keeps my olfactory life running. I hope to hear what are yours. What are the fragrances that are, that you use and enjoy very reliably, very often, but they don't quite fit into any conversational category when it comes to discussing fragrances and perfumes. I'll be waiting for your comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in any of, the, any of these or anything that you see that you like on me, it's, a, it's the year of the dragon after all. All the links and all the codes, everything is in, in, the, in the description of the video down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.